24-hour count. It's uh, uh, around 380 birds here in one day. Imagine that. Uh, so we're going to do two hours of birding around here, and then we're going to head on, do a 30-minute driving tour of the old American uh, canal zone town of Gamboa. I'll show you guys some of the scientific installations that they have there for the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, and, as well as some of the old uh, uh, stuff that's down in Gamboa. So um, bring the, we're going to show, show you guys the setup that we have here. And like I was saying before, it's a little bit dark right now because uh, the sun's just coming up. We want to be here right when the sun's coming up so we get the best that we're right where the birds are coming out. And uh, if it gets too hot, you know, by 830, the birds are done more or less. So we want to be here super early. Now, this is what we're working with. Uh, we have two different scopes here. We have an 80 millimeter scope and a 100 mil millimeter uh, scope. And uh, they're attached to our basically cell phone cameras. These are really good cameras on these phones. These are P30 Pros and uh, we'll be basically broadcasting. So as you can see, what I see here is not as good as what you see on your screen at home. On your computer, you're seeing a much clearer, much better image because uh, you're seeing what the camera's seeing, but I'm having to look through a screen, through a scope. So uh, you might see us like maybe we misidentify a bird. Uh, you know, the difference between a lot of birds is not that much. So if you have a better view of it on your screen, feel free to call us out and then make sure that we got the right bird for you guys. But uh, we're, we're about 99.9% .9 uh, accuracy, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys, give you an idea of exactly where we're at. Right. So this strip of water that you see right in front of us, that is the Panama Canal. So this is specifically the Gamboa Reach of the Panama Canal. We'll see some ships coming out of here in a little bit. And we'll def definitely, uh, we'll definitely uh, show you some of the ships as they're going by and giving you some information on those ships. But all the ships we see coming through here are just coming out of the Culebra Cut, or the Americans call it the Gaylard Cut. And that's where they actually had to dig through the Continental Divide. So once the ships hit this water right here, uh, they're starting to enter Gatun Lake, and uh, they can really pick up speed. Now, as a bird flies, we're about 30 kilometers away from a city of a million and a half people. And because the city is so close, uh, they have to protect all this area around the canal. Um, if you look at a satellite image of Panama, you're going to see a dark green strip of land that follows the canal. It's very noticeable from above today. And if I were to show you a, a map of the old Panama Canal Zone, you would see the exact same thing, uh, the exact same boundaries. And that's because obviously it's all protected now. And if they were to let Panama City grow without check, uh, there'd already be a McDonald's and a shopping mall right here. But you know, they, they have to protect this watershed of the canal. The, the, the canal is fed by 43 rivers and streams. And, you know, uh, if they don't let somebody build anything here, they could divert one of those streams or rivers and that could be catastrophic. So this will always stay protected. Now we're completely, the, the, a lot of people don't know the Panama Canal is pure rainforest from Panama City to Cologne. Uh, the little exception being here in Gamboa, there's a little town, but outside of that, the whole canal is just wilderness. And so it gives us this unique opportunity where we have a signal to where we can broadcast live from the jungle uh, to you guys in, in, in the United States and Canada. And I think we have somebody uh, from Pakistan as well today. Um, and maybe even the UK. Now to give you an idea exactly what, why we have this open area in the middle of the jungle, this is one of the control towers, or uh, we're not control towers, navigational towers for the canal pilots. This is what they use, you know, when you're, uh, man maneuvering a ship through all a uh, jungle, you have all green all around you. So they need these little, you know, reference markers to let them know where there's a curve coming up. Now, directly in front of the canal, we have a, what looks like a, a grassy plain right there, but it's actually, that's a pond. It's called the Ammo Dump Pond. 
Uh, you can see bits of water uh, peeking out through it, but it's a lot of uh, floating vegetation on top of that. After World War II, there were so many munitions and cannons and stuff that were already outdated by the end of the war. Uh, so what they did is they more or less chopped them all up and, and threw them into these ammo dump ponds. Now, the one that's right in front of us is the least secure of those ponds. But if you go up the hill behind me, there's a series of them that actually have a lot of security that, 20, uh, that run 24 seven. And they still haven't declassified uh, what, what they have in those. I do see a Rufus and Tiger here and down in front of me. So I'm gonna probably bring my scope out and, out and uh, show it to you guys here in a second. So, like I said, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead and bring the scope. Um, like I said, it's a little dark right now. and actually a little bit foggy as well. The sunrise in Gamboa is set for 635 today. So we're going to uh, uh, be out here with the sun coming up. It's a beautiful morning, though. John, you can go ahead and take over on the, uh, on the parrots if you want. Okay, good morning. Uh, me and Enrique just saw... I'm good to go back. I'm going to go to the parrots. These are Red Lord parrots. Very social. There's at least right now maybe 10 individuals in this tree. Can't appreciate the color yet. Still a bit dark. Uh, let's see if I can get the woodpecker to see it now. I think a tiny little window. You can see him. I'm going to run. Where is he? Okay. There we go. Um. Oh, can I have the screen? There we go. Oh. Are you recording that, Cynthia? Uh, it's getting it's 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 been saved on, on YouTube now, so no. Okay, do you copy? Yes, I hear you. Do you hear me? Cynthia. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you can hear me. John, do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear I, you. I, I, I was using headphones. I guess they were not working. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no worries. <clears throat> um. I think it was a female lineated woodpecker. Gotcha. Thank you, John. Hold on. Then. I'm going to move again. All right. On, my, on my screen, on my screen, you can see a rufescent tiger heron. Just if I can get a little bit better focus there for you. There's also a wattled jacana kind of walking around us. So if you see a little blackbird come into the screen, uh, how's the focus, Cynthia? Um. It's actually very good, not bad. Okay. The line you Can have I do it. better? I think it could be better. Okay, so like you, you hear me talk to Cynthia right now and that's because uh, we kind of have to. Uh, like I said, <laughs> we don't see as clear an image as you guys do through the cell phone screens that you do on your computers at home. Right, there you go. Still lighting. Rufescent tiger heron. Yeah. So on, on Jerry's scope, you can see the Rufescent Tiger Heron, and on John's scope, uh, you have the lineated Crested Woodpecker. Or, yeah, right, yeah, lineated Crested Lineated. Um, Wait, we, so, still, we still don't have an ID yet, because uh, it's quite dark. About, about 40 meters away. Yeah. I'm going to be shutting off 
my camera every now and then to yeah. show you the birds I'm going to be moving so you guys don't get okay. nauseous. Yeah, yeah so we like, put, put uh, like, like I said, our best option is to use Zoom for this is what we've discovered, but it still has its limitations. Yeah. Uh, so we, we need to uh, constantly be in contact with Cynthia to know how we're, we're focused and, and uh, also, like John said, he hasn't correct. quite got an identification on the bird yeah, yet. Yeah, no, correction, can... correction. It's, it's a crimson crested. Crimson crested, okay, yeah, exactly. That's a male, yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, put it on here for a second. Then I'll go up there. Uh, this bird is about 34 centimeters, 13.5 inches. Yeah. This is... Lacking oh, that black job. patch around the... And behind the eyes. Beautiful bird. This is the bird that John has on the screen. Remember, you can double click to pin the video and see it on the bigger screen. I'm also going to spotlight him right now. Thank you, Cynthia. And then we will go with Jaren now. <laughs> yeah. Rufus and Tiger Heron. Yeah, we heard him fly over us. We're like, we're definitely not going to get him, but he stuck around for us. Thank goodness. And let us know if you guys have any special requests of it for, for any bird we'll be on the lookout for. Mm -hmm. Also, let us know where you're from. So. You can yeah. have an idea. Yeah. What birds you have at home. Exactly. <laughs> we have people from England. They get all excited about the turkey vultures. We're having a really good morning today. Houston, so Texas, representing. Don't mess with Texas. <clears throat> Washington, D.C. Awesome. Ithaca, New York. Welcome, Missy. And welcome, guys. Welcome to Panama through your screens. You can see the beautiful country we're in. Hopefully you guys get a chance to come. Or maybe you've been here already. Vibrant red colors on this woodpecker. It's amazing. Try to get a better view of them. And center the scope a bit better. Tennessee. He's still under the shade and the sun hasn't quite come out yet, so but it's beautiful red. Yeah, we're still about yeah, probably about 10, 15 minutes away from sunrise. about 80 degrees, more or less. We got this cool humidity. Hopefully our scopes don't fog up. I'm happy you like it, Valerie. This is uh, like a new bird in all throughout the week. Weeks I've been doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's the first time we see the crimson woodpecker. All right, I'm gonna move mine. There we go. Awesome. I think someone was asking what bird Jaren had on his scope. I think you had was a rufescent and tiger heron. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and share the slide again. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Is that the woodpecker? Your woodpecker making the noise there, John? Uh, I think so. I think he he flew somewhere else yeah. and. 
I just heard somebody pecking on some wood. Hmm. The carpenter of the He's like right on top of me. Some of and these the woodpeckers. woodpeckers. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Oh, some some of these woodpeckers are not nice. Um, they go into doves' nests and they peck on the baby's heads and they eat the brains. All right, on my screen, uh, I have a green iguana. Oh, nice. That's an interesting bird. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, we usually see 10 to 15 different bird species in two hours of tour we do in this area. Three to five different mammals, so. Owls. We did see 24 birds yesterday and, and four mammals. Yeah. Yeah, we've been breaking records. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear the woodpecker right behind me. Yeah, he's loud. Um, yeah, while Jaren's up on the hill, I'm going to be moving around yeah. the canopy. I'm going to go down the hill, get another view of perspective of the ammo dump pond, maybe see something closer. Wow. He was very close. Yeah. I just don't see him. Yeah, see, if, see if you can find him. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the scope on him. All right. The woodpecker's tongue is so long that it wraps around the brain, serves as a cushion while he's banging on his head against the wood. <laughs> All right. So Enrique is with me. Thunder in the distance. A little bit of a little bit of a little bit So we're setting up the scope where there used to be a navigation signal, but it was removed.
de 40. Me llega a 60. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Can we see something here? We haven't quite seen it through the binoculars. We think it's that blue darkness that might have his nest around here. Yeah, we think it's a blue darkness. I think it's still dark. Still okay. getting a bit of a backlight. This is not gonna be all that exciting for you guys from the United States, but I have a turkey vulture here. Might as well get it out of the way. Right on top of one of the navigational towers. And these are migrant, mostly migratory. They'll come here during the winter, but a few of them do stay year round. And we kind of have a, a group that's here every day on these towers. Yeah, and we're still waiting for, like I said, we're still waiting for the sun to pop out so we can get a little bit better. Uh, lighting on these 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 uh, images, but you guys you guys know the routine. But it is very overcast right now, and a little actually foggy as well. My screen, the all-time morning favorite, Waddle Jacana, walking on the vegetation. Looking like it's walking on water. Hence the name, the nickname, Jesus Bird. Bird is about 30 meters away from me. Jet black plumage. I guess someone yesterday say like a um, candy corn beak. In the far distance, you can hear the howler monkeys. Hear some ant wrens. Waddle jacana. There you go. Show off, little buddy. I'm gonna go back on this one because you can see his. <clears throat> yeah. I'm gonna come back down on this tiger here because you're gonna see the front of his neck. Does that tiger heron look like it's ready to shoot? Is... No, actually, he's showing his uh, throat right now. So I'm going to try to see if we can get a sh good shot of that. Give you guys an idea why it's called a tiger heron. Does it roar like a tiger? Yeah. See those. All right. 
We're going to move closer to the ammo dump pond. Maybe see something else. Yesterday we were lucky to see a capybara in this area. Largest rodents on the planet. There was a lot of capybara around here. I need my screen, please. Yep. On my screen, we have a northern jacana. And you guys should be able to control the, the screen that you see. Uh, you just have to click on the, the window or double click it or something like that. And get this guy to stay still. Now, if you guys were here with us in Panama, we'd find a bird, we'd have the scope on it in a matter of seconds and you'd be looking at it, but it's, we're still kind of adjusting the whole having to do it through a cell phone thing. It's a, it's a new uh, skill that we're trying to develop. And the jacana, even the jacana is a very small bird, has massive feet so it can uh, spread, its, uh, you know, spread its weight out and, and uh, stand on this floating vegetation. So that gives them, sometimes wow. gives them the name, the Jesus bird, because they look like they're, they're standing on water. And also they have an interesting reproductive cycle. The male, I'm sorry, the females lay four clutches of eggs per year, each with a different male. And as soon as she lays the eggs, she leaves those with the, the, the father and then she moves on to her next fling. Meanwhile, the, the, the male jacana is gonna the, basically raise the chicks. Yeah, female empowerment. Yeah. Um, this is the water that Kennedy you were seeing on John's screen, and I'll put up the North India Canada in a second. Uh, yeah. Because I have to wait for them to be set up and focused before I can share, otherwise they'll kind of lose control over theirs. Yeah, their we can't super focus our scopes or even see our scopes when she's sharing the, the images. <laughs> Hold on, I think I'm fogging up. Yeah. Cue the elevator music. Hmm. Please stand by. Here's a rusty margin flycatcher on my screen. Oops. 
So many flies. Can't stand still. I have a blue darkness if I can get this centered. Blue da blue darkness on my screen. It's a light a tropical chamber. Tropical chamber. Oh wow. <clears throat> Is this focused okay? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'm gonna sit there for a second and see if I can find something else. All right. I'm just can I let you guys enjoy that and now we'll be sharing the pictures later, okay? Just don't want to take the spotlight on that. And remember, you can just double click and which one of the birds you want to see in the big screen. Or you can put gallery view, which is going to give like both of them at the same time. Yeah, I had a rusty margin flycatcher on my screen, Cynthia. Yeah. Hold on, I just... I'm, I'm waiting before I can do that to oh, okay, I'm sorry. see the birds first. Your bird's boring, John. No, I'm just... I know, I know. <laughs> 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 All right, so if, if you guys also, right now, if you look at the guide cam, uh, we have a car carrier, a roll-on, roll-off uh, car carrier passing in front. I think a, I think a kiskity just flew in behind the dacness, and there's a palm tanager as well, I think. <sighs> Well, there's palm tenders over to the right. I'll get on those in a second. I mean, what you see, there's a, a car carrier passing by in, in the canal. This carrier can hold upwards of 7,000 cars. And this, this ship in particular is paying about 320,000 US dollars for the transit today which sounds like a lot, but that's, that's nothing for the ships. That's about 10% of what it would cost them to go around South America just in fuel. And obviously they save the 25 days. Okay, where is that? There's a little more to the left. Right. Oh, and there's also the blue darkness right there. Both. Yeah. Just gonna get focus there. It's a palm tanager. A palm tanager. If I were to give you a wider shot, that the ship is passing right behind the palm tanager that we're looking at right now. First, we're going to the common toady fly catcher that John had on the screen, the bright yellow bird. I don't know. The no, it wasn't common toady flycatcher. It was the rusty margin. Oh, it was a rusty margin. I don't remember. Yeah. Rusty margin. Oh. Here's some toucans in the distance. And we have the blue darkness with Jaren.
Why do the tiny birds pose for us so far away? I know, right? Where are you at, John? Um, down the hill. You might want to come up here. There's there's quite a uh, bit going on in front of me. Okay. Give me a couple of minutes. Hold on. All right. And the palm dodger. All right, screen, please. Yep. You got a background? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh. Trying to get this darkness back, but my phone keeps trying to focus mm -hmm. for me. I got a really good view of the tiger here. Okay. Oh, wow. You, That's amazing, John. Wow. Hold on, let me get a. If you, we, you got it right, that might be the best view of the tiger here we had so far. <clears throat> Beautiful. Which one is it? The pheasant tiger here. Your pheasant? Yeah. That is okay. gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. It looks like he's in that transition of changing his plumage from a juvenile form to fully adult. That is gorgeous. Good job, John. Thank you. He's on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> Animatronics. <laughs> That's the future of virtual tourism. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, I think he's, he saw something. But I lost sight of him. Let me see. Let me keep my distance. But it looks like he saw something. He just like ran for it. I have to be careful in this area because yesterday I saw a snake. I don't know what kind of snake it was, but it's still a snake. How many venomous snakes do we have, Jaren? Jaren? I'm sorry, what did you say? How many venomous snakes do we have? We're on 38. Okay. Do you have any luck, John? Yeah, I'm going to get my scope on the tiger heron again. All right. Hold on.
have a really good shot of him. Come down in here. I believe I have a black chested jay, but he's kind of hidden away. Those don't stick around for long, so. Yeah, yeah there we go. go. And you can focus a little bit more on the. Oh, and then I gotta give the. Hold on. Sorry. Um, How am I focusing? No, you're you're not a good focus here. Yeah. <clears throat> now this bird is literally about two hundred meters away. So, uh, how's that? Um, we can see him better, but this is quite dark, and his eyes are very far away too. Um, what is your your guessing on the bird? It's a black chested jay. Let me see if I can get a better focus. But like I said, this bird is super far away. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, definitely the bushes. You can go ahead and put it. You can put the image up if you want. Okay. Not that one. <laughs> All right. Wow. Nice shot, Jaren. It's it's too far away to be honest. No, but it's good. But you can still see what it feels, yes. Yeah. Cool. A new bird too. Damn. Someone was asking if the black chested jay they're migratory at. No, it's think. not. It's not. The black chested black chested jays are, are year round, uh, and they can live. Uh, they're on both slopes of the Caribbean and the Pacific. They can get up to about, uh, I would guess, fifteen hundred meters in altitude. Be about five thousand feet for in, in freedom units. Um, I think I have on my screen of a female crimson back tanager, which just flew. And he's landed. Let me see. I think there's going to be a bit of a backlight. Oh, he's gone. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna go back to where, where you're at, Jerry. Yeah, I, I've got some. Uh, they're not. I, I like to have you up here because they're not staying still. So imagine between the two of us, one of us can get the birds that are flying around in front of me. Hold on. I think that. Okay. Actually, John, there's some black-bellied whistling ducks flying your way. Yeah, I see them. I think Enrique is trying to show me something. Else. Okay. 
Vete. Ponlo, ponlo donde está el... el... Ajá, ya lo poste, bueno, pues vete para la derecha y vete directo para allá arriba. Allá arriba está. ¿Qué hay arriba? Ajá, bueno, las son chiquititas. Ahí está poquito más. Ahí está estacionada todavía. Eso bueno. Está sumamente lejos. Sí, por eso que se un poco más. Let me see. I'm trying to see with the scope because with the binoculars, I'm not seeing anything. Sí, 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 pero déjame. It's that, right? It's... Sí, sí, sí. Kind of pushing this. These these ducks are extremely far away, but um, I have black-bellied whistling ducks. I'm going to find them here in a second. Actually. I don't know. That's a leaf. Hi there. And John should get a better. John's going to be closer to the pond a little bit later, where these ducks are at. Hopefully, he'll get a better shot of them. But those are black-bellied whistling ducks, very, very, very far away. Yeah, I'm not sure how focus on me either. Ah. No, no. How's that focus, Cynthia? It is focus. Is there any way you can zoom a little bit more? Yeah, let me try. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. How's that? Um, Is that uh, like I said, these are just, I think they're just too far away. Um, it's, it's, it's okay. But like I said, John's going to be down on the, the opposite side of the pond. He'll be closer there a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, you can you can see the, the the dogs and everything. So yeah, I think that's the best you can do from the far. It's very very far away, and then you can see them fine. I think it's great. And when when it's down and closer, you can get a better view. But I see it right now. You can go. And like I said, yeah, they're they're, they're those <laughs> they're about they're about two hundred meters away from me right now. Um, John's going to be very very close to him here though. When a little probably like an hour from now, when he's walking down by the pond, they should still be around somewhere down there. Get a much better view of them. Maybe if you try adjusting a little bit of zoom with the scope. Uh, that's just not going to help much. Uh, oh no, uh, how's that? <laughs> right, you see? It's right there. Oh. Right. Like I said, I'm pushing the limits of my scope here. Yeah, right there. It's just okay. Don't make it blow up, Jerry.
Beautiful. Beautiful. The way those those ducks are, yeah, they're too far. I, I was gonna go. I get closer to them. Was kind of in a a roll right now. That's a little gray bird. Down by the pond, the, the ducks are super quick. Mm -hmm. okay. You want you can just you can go ahead and take off. Okay. All right. So John's going to take a little walk now. He's going to go uh, under the canopy, see what we can see. Uh, looks like lots going on over there. By the way. Yeah. Cynthia Joan would like a, a link. Did you see that? Yeah, I just saw the email. I'm sending okay. it. Thank you. Oh, it's pity she missed the good shots today. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous that Jaron got to see little Jay. Well, he's, he's over where you're walking towards. Okay. Somewhere in that area. All right. I'm going to go take a selfie with him. <laughs> I believe that's a blue gray tanager, but my lighting, I got to check my binoculars after I get this focus. I, I think like this is really far away and my binoculars aren't quite getting, I think it's a blue gray tanager. You might be able to confirm that on your screen, Cynthia. You'll be able to see it much better than I can.
Um, I I think it is it is a blue gray China Jerry though. Yeah, super far away. <laughs> also, you guys back home. Let us know what you're seeing too. Yeah. Darren's seeing a blue and gray tanager, but it might be a harpy eagle. You never know. Yeah, you never know. They, they, they basically put them side by side. <laughs> I think one has a different bill. <laughs> the mosquitoes are on the rampage. All right, we need <clears throat> sunlight. Yesterday we had amazing sunlight. Um, but the problem with that is the birds were done by 7.30, and today's kind of be the opposite. We're going to get started a little slow, and we'll finish up quick when the sun peeks through. But we are in the tropics. The sun can only stay away for so long. How many, how many birds have we seen so far? We are uh, 12. Okay, well, that's not bad. 12 There's some work to do. Yeah. Get to work, guys. <laughs> I knew I had to stick around here. You have something? Yeah, I have a Trogan female. Oh. I think I have dust on my scope. I wonder where the male is. I did see something flying up there. It's a lady, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that was a female. It uh, doesn't have much color, although you did see that, that, that red-orangey on the belly. Okay. The darkness again. The lighting is just going downhill fast. Yeah, the sun's kind of pushing the clouds this way.
I can't find the the male. That's the male that you're looking at on that slide. Check some chats. Did you find the trogan? No, not the male. I just saw the okay. female. We want to see colors. Yes, we do. In the bird world, the males wear the makeup. Yeah. The females can't have too many bright colors, especially if they nest out in the open, because when they're incubating their eggs, they have to be able to blend in. Now, when you have a bird like a toucan, which has its nest inside of a tree, uh, they can be whatever color, it doesn't matter, but that's why we have about 800 species of female little greenish brownish birds. Yeah, it's really testosterone, what makes our hair look better, nails, skin. That's why we don't have to go to the beauty salon. Yeah. LPG tanker, right? Uh, yes, it is. You can see it or just above? I guess yeah, you can. Yeah, a, a little glimpse of it, but it looks huge. It's, it's, it's post Panamax. Oh, man. If, 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 if Francisco can get a view of it, go for it. If not, we'll, we'll have plenty more opportunities. Yeah, I think, I think he's getting a view of it. Okay, so yeah, the ship you see passing by right now, this is a tanker. Uh, the ship's empty. We know it's empty because you can see the red line across the bottom. But this ship is too big to use the old set of locks. So this has to go through the new locks, which opened in 2016. This ship, in particular, paying about 450,000 US dollars for the transit today. But uh, just four years ago, this ship was too big to use the canal. Rather, four years and two months ago. Time flies. And you can hear the parrots, worst neighbors in the rainforest. I would, I would give it to the howler monkeys. Yeah, true. I think they'd be the worst neighbors. Oh, don't move, Pancho.
bird that we've all been looking for. The kill build toucan. Oh, nice. Or rainbow build. Kill builds too, can you see all those colors of the rainbow on the bill? Greenish, bluish, purplish, red, orange. And he's just posing there, not moving much. There you go. Let people on the other side of the world see you, buddy. Yeah, when people see the toucan, they often remember Toucan Sam. And they think they're just fruity little birds, fruity seed-eating birds, but they're not. They're actually quite vicious. I think Jaren said earlier, you know, the woodpeckers build their homes in the trees, and these guys steal the, the nest from the woodpeckers. They'll eat the woodpeckers, eat the babies, eat the eggs and take over. They'll eat snakes, they'll eat lizards. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry to break your heart. It's nature. Right, on my screen, I have some black vultures. The lighting's horrible, though, because uh, they're actually a little bit too close to me. Is the image clear, Cynthia? Uh, I think you can focus just a little bit more on the. Uh, now it now it's great now, perfect. Okay. Awesome. Great job, Jen. Thank you. And the camera's readjusting the focus, so. The cameras think they know better than we do. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have, Jaren? Black vulture. Panamanian so, air. Force. Yeah. You can be embarrassed with your, you know, little toucan, I guess. The black vultures, uh, this bird can digest anthrax. Uh, yeah, you develop a pretty tough stomach when you have your head in dead stuff all day long. Yeah, well, we're, we're taking Pepto-Bismol from eating chili. <laughs> it's awesome that this guy's posing. You usually see at least three individuals running together, but this guy looks like he's all by himself. During your your scope is a little bit off on the vulture. You can move it. I'm, I'm actually going to move. I'm um because if John has a toucan, I can use this time to find something a lot better than a vulture.
Well, vultures are necessary. They're the cleanup crew in the rainforest. Absolutely. Get rid of things that can be quite harmful, like rabies, for example. Yeah, it looks, they look kind of creepy. The heralds of death. Sorry. saw a fox yeah, we saw a gray fox yeah a gray fox that we've been seeing in this area and we saw a possum yeah Grooming. All right, guys, where did it go? Huh. Got a mask to tie her. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 
yeah, it, it requires some yoga poses for John to, to be able to adjust the, <laughs> to get the birds on the screen. Oh, well, my scope didn't respond well and I believe on my screen I have a, a scarlet thigh darkness. What? Scarlet thigh darkness, but I'm I'm having trouble because it's far away. My binoculars aren't quite strong enough. Females in there right now, but the males right next to her, he's just kind of hopping around. Hold on, I'm having technical difficulties. At least get get the get the Tatira for a microsecond, Cynthia. Jen, it, it was moving a lot. I couldn't I couldn't see it, but um, I'm not sure if anyone did. Jared, is is there anyone with you up the hill in there? No, no. No. Why? No, because I uh, remember that the Tatira kind of like always hanging out. Oh, you're out. talking about if there's any Tatiras. Yeah, they have a nest up on one of the towers, but they're not here right now. No, okay, gotcha. So, yeah, on my ice screen, I, be I believe it's a scarlet thigh darkness, but I'm just not getting the lighting that I'd, I'd really like to have. I don't know if you could see a little red eye on it, that'd give it away. Mm. And he's gone anyway, but so it, I'm going to say Scarlet Thigh Darkness. Oh, we're here, here in Panama, we have birds. Uh, most of them will start nesting before the dry season, but they could be, do they could be doing it year, year round. Couple of goodies. Microphone's on. You guys look at my screen. I have a Central American agouti, a rodent about the size of a small dog, the size of a Yorkshire. Central American agouti. I think he has a palm seed in his mouth. They actually use seeds to mark their territory. Dig a little hole, plant the seed, create a perimeter. The 
problem is that sometimes they forget where they plant those seeds and boom, a tree. I think it's a royal palm seed. Because he's standing right below it, so. Central American agouti. Kind of like a rabbit without ears. Or a rat without a tail. It does have a little tail though. I have a female crimson back tanager. I think John already saw one. I saw a female, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I have too. This is what we call jaguar snacks. Bottom of the food chain right there. Ooh, he ran. He's gone. He's gone. He saw Francisco. Scope needs some like grease. <laughs> Something to work on. Yeah, I think needs a little bit of maintenance. Yeah, Shaham, you're lucky. You, you get to do this in the afternoon. All the rest of us have to be up early in the, this side of the world. Yo, thank you guys for waking up early. We're really happy to be out here showing this. It's been, what, five months? Yeah, it's been five months of lockdown, and we're finally free for a second. Put you in a better mood for your work day. Great. It's always birds and coffee. <laughs> it's a great way to start. And this was the bird on your screen. Well, this is a male. He had the female. I think we should make the slides with the females and birds too. So. Easier. Let me give you a, another view of a kill build. We 
Now we are very grateful and happy to to have you guys um, join us every morning, uh, most of the mornings, for the bird watching. It was a great, great excuse to be out there <laughs> as much as we can. Well, then. For the tourists. Oh wow, that's a beautiful view right there, John. The lighting is amazing. I can hear some chestnut mandible toucans behind me. I might go up on the hill and see if I can find them. Sometimes people think that the toucans are like related to the hornbills, but they're not. Something called convergent evolution. Got a lot of ant birds, little, what they call LBJs, little brown jobs. They're behind the leaves. Well, no wonder we saw that sloth the other day around here. There's a bunch of Cecropia trees and there's a Barrigon tree. Yeah, the Barrigon tree. In January, February, the barrigon trees make these puffy flowers that the sloths go crazy for. Yeah. Oh. Well, Enrique is also a barrigon. Barrigon means <laughs> big belly. Big belly. <laughs> In Spanish. Yeah, the, the, the tree has a bulge at the base of it. Kind of makes it look like a pregnant tree, so we got that name. I guess the same with Enrique. Yeah. In the distance, I hear a woodpecker. What do you have on the screen, Jared? Uh, I saw a violaceous trogon, but it flew, so I'm trying to find it again. Um. So it's kind of have the scope in the vicinity, and so when I do spot it, I can get on it quick. Gotcha. What are we looking at the guy cam? What are you guys seeing? Enrique, Pancho? What is it? What is it? Can they see a bird? Nice. And they're seeing something. Hold on. I'm going to go to where they're at. I think they said it was too dark. All right. All right, guys, let's keep going. See those tatars 
Well, Cynthia, go go ahead and show what the Tataras look like. Okay. The mass Tatira. The yeah, mass Tatira. Whoa. That's nice. Good, great. Okay. At Canal Authority Workers. Where are, you, where are you at, John? I'm walking towards the pipeline road. Okay. Towards the entrance. How many birds so far, Cynthia? We have 17 birds so far. Okay. Try to break our previous record. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had a golden hooded tanager fly into view. Now he, he went back behind the tree. So I'm kind of staying. I'm going to have the scope just in the vicinity. Hopefully he'll pop out. And if he does, I'll get him quick. There's some some green honey creepers. You can some them. really good birds today, dear. These are female. Well, the one I'm seeing is a female. Let's see if I can find it again. Hold on.
There we go. I think that's it. Like I said, you guys have a better view than I do sometimes. Especially when my scope is shaking like this. I'm having a little trouble getting it on it. And it, dang it. Uh, it was a green hunting creeper there. Get the darkness again. <laughs> and <if we're, laughs> I think they're I think they're toying with me. Don't lose hope, they might come back. No, they're actually all flying your way. Working with anything, John? No. I hear some orange chin parakeets flying over me, but they'll never stay still long enough to get a picture. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna move. I think the like the birds just stopped moving. Do you see anything, Jer? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, they're just too far away. Kind of have to rely more on my eyesight than than anything because kind of deaf on one ear. But... So we're gonna, we said we're gonna do a two hours of, of birding. I think we're gonna stay a little bit longer because the sun's just now starting to peek through and should give us some really good lighting and hopefully some birds pop out for that. So we're still going to, uh, still gonna do the driving tour again, but we're gonna do a little bit more birding. I'm, I don't wanna quite give up on it yet. Okay. Good more, huh? I'm gonna move. I'm gonna go down to the ammo dump pond. Okay. Kind of in a lull right now. Yeah. Yeah, Holler monkeys. monkeys, yeah.
come out, come out. We'll probably, I think we'll probably have better luck pulling out the scope uh, in Gamboa that we did yesterday. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Um, Man, we're not seeing anything. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Francisco, Enrique, and me, we're not What's seeing going on up here either right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just head down to the pond. You'll definitely have the ducks and the yeah. herons and, and stuff there. Is asking for a snake. You want to see a snake? You want to see a snake, but from far away. <laughs> right about like right at the entrance of the pipeline road. One time, I had a woman on tour, and and she was just terrified of snakes and. I just kept telling her, don't worry, the snakes are more scared of you than the, you know, the you are of them. And the second they hear somebody coming, you know, they're, they're going to run away. It's not like they're jumping out of, of people or anything like that. And, and that was the one day that, uh, <laughs> you remember that day? I think the, so. The snake fell out of the tree right next to her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a big one too. The tree boa. Yeah. It's like not even a meter away from her, a snake just falls out of the tree. I remember this one time I had two girls from New York and they were wearing sandals you know how we we send an email saying you know wear clothes shoes uh, bring a rain jacket so the girls were wearing the sandals sandals and I'm like didn't you read the email and they're like yeah but we want to look good we want to look glamorous <laughs> Like two minutes right after I said that, one of them had a baby snake tangled uh, in her toes. And she screamed, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And it was a venomous uh, snake. It was a coral snake, right? I think so, yeah. If you think about it, we, we've had a lot of these moments with the snakes, right? Yeah. <laughs> that time we were on the boat and there was a lady we always ask uh, what, what animals do you want to see we're, we're taking requests and this lady's like I do not want to see a snake and we're like okay so we're in the boat and it, the snake came down the tree 
and went in the boat, went across her feet. And she didn't see it. She was looking at the monkeys. And um, she didn't see it. I didn't say anything. I was about to say, hey, look, there's a snake, but I didn't want her to flip out and jump in the water. How close are you to being having a view of the uh, of the canal? Uh, about a, a minute. Yeah, we got a massive ship coming. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you guys are about to see one of those ships that's paying $1.2 million for a transit. So I told the lady, I'm like, you know, you had a snake go across your feet right now. She's like, ah, oh, you're kidding. She never knew. <laughs> Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big one. John, was that the gimbal gimbal limbo tree? The gumball limbo tree, where? The, the one you were showing on the video. That's what um, Valerie's asking. The peeling red bark, the tree. Yes, yep. yes, yeah. Gumbo limbo tree was that red tree that you saw that was peeling. I would, I would think that you have these trees on the eastern side of Texas. They range from the southern part of the US all the way down here. And that's the tree they traditionally use for carousel horses. Mm -hmm. But it has an interesting thing. Uh, in the dry season, a lot of the trees here lose their leaves, including the gumbo limbo. And uh, here they call it India desnuda, uh, or the naked Indian. And uh, so this tree in particular, the gumbo limbo, it loses its leaves in the dry season and then the red bark peels away to expose a green trunk so the tree can still have photosynthesis through its trunk. Also known as a tourist tree because it's red and peeling. Yeah, that's what they call them in Florida. Oh, something. Got that uh, crimson back tanager again. Just something to look at. Yeah. Something came out for me, and it's gone. <laughs> awesome. Uh, on the chat, I just shared a video that Enrique and the guides took uh, this morning from the Panama Canal very early today. Um, it was taken with a drone, so you have an idea how the canal also looks like uh, when it's dark. It's a really, really cool video. And then you can see like great views. And it was taken from a from a drone, so it's pretty much what the view that the birds has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or can I have the screen, Cynthia? Uh, sure. Yeah. I have a. I think it's an Annie, but I'm not sure which one it is yet because he's behind the leaves. You should be able to zoom without any problems. Let me know. Okay. There it is. Is it 
greater Annie. You see him? Kind of looks like a crow. Kind of looks like a grackle. Beautiful, like black feathers that with the sun kind of look purplish, bluish. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Hold on. Oh. He's gone. The Panama flycatcher, I think. Greater Annie, Cynthia. Like I said, you guys can see better than I can on this. Does this bird have a little red crown on it? No. Should I get a focus? Yeah, try to get a focus. Yes. Come on. Stay here, sorry. No, it doesn't have a red crown there. Not a Panama flycatcher. I just can't really see it very well through my screen. Hold on, Cynthia. I think I have the Greater Annie again. Okay, there we go. Let me see here. I think it's... I don't... Then on, on your left, there you can hear the toucans. I, I just, it's amazing you can hear that. Um, I don't think it's a Panama flight catcher, Jan. It's not. I, it's, um, I want to say tropical kingbird, but there's there's no red there. Oh, he's gone again. Oh, you can hear the two cans. I'm trying to find out what I'm seeing. Jim, can you can you take a look at the bird on your screen trying to uh, see? What I just can't you, see on, it. Me... Like I said, hold you guys on. on your computers at home have a much better view than we do. To our cell phone through a scope. Tropical Kimber, though, but I don't, I don't see the picture of the tropical Kimber here that has a red head, though. So I think he might. Some, sometimes you can't really see that 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 crest that you're I think, talking about. I think about. I have a tropical Kingbird. Yeah, those are the ones that are most common. So there's absolutely no no crown there. No, it's okay. Sometimes you can't see it. Yeah. I'm going to go back up on the hill here because there's a ton of toucans uh, making a bunch of noise. Purple gallon you on my screen. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful shot of the gallon you Wow. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> kind of close, too. I mean, he's... Yeah, beautiful. Wait. 10 feet away, 15 feet away from me. And you really appreciate those colors and the candy corn beak. All right. 
Awesome. Awesome possum. That gallon who has an itch. Whoop. And he's gone. Gallon you will. Making that call that you hear. That was just amazing. Jaren, I think you should work your way down here. Okay. I think this is what Jaren had on the stream, which is a tropical kinbird. I just wish I had a better view of it. Yeah. And then the parker. Purple galleon. Oh, you you want your screen back, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Hold on. I think that there's a tiger hand that looks like he's about to get something. Okay. We had to fly twenty birds. Okay. Yes, and a green iguana and a um, Central American agouti. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Base is full, so might break that record. Oh, there. See it moving. The green, the, uh, the green iguana, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the iguana. That was a, one of the first ones, right? <laughs> So we're seeing the pheasant tiger heron. Yeah, the iguana was the most interesting bird. Yeah, I got him right here. Okay. 
I'm gonna. Where's those, those toucans at? Is it me or I can hear a lot of toucans? Yeah, yeah they're really close to me, but they're kind of well hidden. I'm trying to get a good angle on them. Okay, gotcha. Sí, sí. So anyway, the, the, the tree that I have my scope on right now is where the toucan is. You just can't see him. I'm going to start putting things up and I'm going to meet you down there, John, okay? Okay. We, uh, we're good. We got this pheasant tiger heron here on the, on the hunt. A little splash. Maybe something got got. one of 19 different heron species that we have here in Panama. It looks like it, it got something. Cause he looks like he has a, oh, oh, yeah. We gotta get that one. Hold on guys. I think I saw a rare one. I think it was a sun return. Yeah, yeah, I see him. Hold on. Oh man. Yeah, I'm on the run. I don't want to drop the scope. Nothing. He's there. It wasn't a sun return, it was a least return. Plumage is quite cool. It's like orangey, bright orange.
like how many birds are behind this grass. Have some uh, two cans on my screen before I head out. We saw a lease but turns uh Jaren fly into the grass. I don't know if you've seen that one. Not in the pond. Yeah. Um I'm gonna head down in just a second, okay? Okay. I'm gonna be waiting patiently for this bird to hopefully show up again. I think I'm gonna get some really good color on this. Uh, I need my screen, please. If he just shows face again, uh, the, the toucan just flew over my head and into some uh, into the trees right here, which means if he'll pop his head out there, I'll be able to show you the colors without the the sky doling it. One second. Okay. Come on, playing hide and seek with me. There we go. There's the colors. He's still playing hide and seek, but at least you can see some color there. What do you have there? The uh, keel build, but he flew into a tree, so I have some good lighting on him. Yeah. And he's eating. <laughs> so maybe he'll sit there for a second. But you can really get the colors now. How's the focus, Cynthia? Oh, and it's gone. And it's back. <clears throat> Sorry, sometimes I forgot. I'm muted. Um, yeah, the it was a great focus. <laughs> some so much noise in the city that I, I have to mute myself. On the mic. Oh, there you go. Oh wow. That is wonderful. Wow. And he's gone. I have a juvenile red, uh, yellow headed car, car. I'm going to show you real fast before I head out. I'm kind of leaving you hanging down there, John. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. I'm 
I really want to see that least return. I've only seen it a couple of times. Okay. This is a yellow headed car car, but it's a juvenile, so, and it's gone. <laughs> I swear. All the fly catchers are scaring the car car like always. I see it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and head down your way, John. Yeah. We'll probably see some yellow headed car cars and get more. I think Enrique sees something. I'm gonna focus in on the bank swallows and southern rough winged. What do you see, Enrique? Yeah, in the picture you can see the um, a refescent tiger hero, and he was eating a baby crocodile. That was like a probably like a year ago or something like that. on tour. Amazing. Um. Sí, 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 sé dónde está, pero... Oh. Way too tiny. ¿Tienes un screen? No, 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 it's okay. 
Yeah, it's really hard to see. I'm just showing some of the pictures that I I, I, uh, I wasn't able to show for that long because you have the birds of the strings. The camouflage too well. I don't see it pointing with the laser. Ah, yeah, see. Yeah, with the variable seed eater. Oh, what's that? Déjame sacar esto de aquí. Yeah, I think these are bank swallows. And I think we don't have a slide for this one, Cynthia, the uh, southern rough winged. Do the back like so. Yes, swallows. You have the slide for the northern, I think, right? Or southern. Can you hear me, Cynthia? Yeah. John, is a southern or a northern? Yeah, actually, I, I think it was a southern rough wing. Okay, then, yeah, we actually do have a slide for that. Okay. Actually, I think. If you look at the guide cam, Francisco is going to be showing you guys some birds of paradise, but the flowers, these reddish, yellowish, orange flowers. There's more over here. And the closest relative 
uh, to a banana in the new world. A lot of people, when they think of South America, they think of bananas, banana republics. But those fruits are not from here. They're from the old world. They were brought in and they grow very well here. What do you think? I'm going to keep this. Uh... Okay. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. No sabías que era el chiquitico. No, All right, so we're getting all uh, ready here. We're going to uh, one second. do a little driving tour of Gamboa here. As you can't tell, uh, the car washes have not, have not been opened in six months. How'd you guys do? Okay. We're going to get to see your okay. sun return, though. We're going to get to see the sun return. Oh man. All right. We're ready to roll. All right, so now we're going to take a little uh, 25, 30 minute driving tour of Gamboa. We're also going to do some birding in Gamboa. We had some good luck with that yesterday, so we're going <laughs> to we're going to continue uh, that, that little tradition, I guess. Huh? All right, so uh, Gamboa is an old American canal zone town. Always been the headquarters of the dredging division for the canal. And when the Americans were here, maybe about 1,500 to 2,000 people lived here. <coughs> Excuse me. And now only about 200 people live in Gamboa and most of them are scientists. Uh, this is the headquarters of the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. Give me past that one tower right there. Right. Now up here on the right-hand side, we have this big crane And this crane is called Teton. Uh, this crane was built in 1942 in Hamburg, Germany. And after World War II, the Americans took it. They took it to the port in Long Beach where they, they nicknamed it Herman the German. And then in 1997, uh, this is actually the same crane they used to move the, gold, uh, the spruce goose into the museum, a uh, Howard Hughes plane. And then in 1997, they sold it to the Panama Canal for $1. And a Norwegian company deconstructed it and reconstructed it here in Panama. And they, this, this crane floats. They use it to go up and down the, the, the canal and they use it to lift up the gates on the locks. And these gates weigh 700 tons. So it's a very powerful crane. It's a really good view today. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on. So we're gonna come into Gamboa. Now, even though Gamboa only had 1500 people living in it, uh, it was still, uh, everything was provided for the people that lived here. They had Olympic sized swimming pool, baseball fields, football fields. There was a, a recreation center, a theater, a, U, a, a commissary where they could buy U.S. goods at U.S. prices. And we'll see some of that up here in a second. All right. It's basically like a little town just nestled away in the jungle. It's kind of a special place. If I could live anywhere in the world and I didn't have to drive to the city every day, this is where I would live. Just basically your backyard, it would be rainforest. All right. Then over here, on the right-hand side, we have the dredging division of the canal. 
And the dredging division needs to be here because this is where the Chagres River meets the canal, which we'll see, you actually see a ship going there in the background. Uh, the Chagres River meets the canal here and it puts a lot of mud and silt. Here's the old post office. And now a little fruit stand. <laughs> Gamboa post office, go ahead. This uh, building over here on the right, the beige building, this was the commissary. Like I said, it was like a supermarket where they could buy US goods at US prices. Over here we have the uh, old theater, which is now kind of repurposed into a little store and some apartments. The police station right up here on my right hand side, uh, the headquarters of the ecological police who are here to protect the rainforest. <clears throat> Slow in case there's some birds. Um, did you get lap bones? Okay. And here we have the tennis courts. You know, where else in Latin America are you going to find a baseball field, number one, but a baseball field named uh, McGrath Field? I'll show you in a second. Did you get a tra tropical mockingbird? It's one right there. Isn't it? Yes. Um, I flew off. Um, out on the grass, there's a tropical mockingbird. You want to get the scope out or no? Yeah, there's a tropical mockingbird out in the grass. And John's gonna hop out and get a scope on this tropical mockingbird. See right out there? In the, in the tent? See the lap wings? He kind of looks like a little road runner. Tropical mockingbird. Really good. In Florida, state bird is a mockingbird. He's chasing something. A tropical mockingbird. What do you see? Oh, variable feed eater. Hold on. Hold on. I think it's a female variable seed eater. Hold on. There you go. Pick build seed pinch. This is like kind of like hiding behind the one from the pop up on the grass. Yeah. Uh, 
two, three, four. Okay. Also variable between the two different species. Thick field seed pinches and, and uh, a variable seed. Um, kind of what are you over here? And yeah, that's a common dog, right? Yeah. So variable seed eaters and thick build finch. I got bank swallows. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight individual. So we have the variable seat eater in mammals. Oh, John. They're yeah, kind of behind the grass. None of them are really out in the open. Yeah. Yeah. John. 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 Well, what do you need from John? Oh, what, what was the name of the other bird that was with the variable seed eater? Thick build uh, seed finch. Ready? All right. All right, so yeah, there's a little baseball field birding. Now we're gonna head up and we're gonna check out the the Smithsonian's Tropical Research Institute. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they let them out to play. <laughs> so yeah, the ecological police has a dog rescue and uh, John was saying this is the time of day that they let the dogs out to roam around Gamboa to play. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go check out the Smithsonian. Uh, drop me off at the indoor labs, then you go down to that one stretch there and see if you can find something. All right. It's kind of like a nice, overcast, beautiful morning. Yeah, they're like going to be dealing with some rain soon. This person here is lost. <laughs> Put me over here and then go with John. All right. 
<clears throat> I'm gonna hop out. They're gonna head on to go look for some birds up ahead while I do a little spiel here. All right, so this right here, this is the Smithsonian's Tropical Research Institute. For you guys uh, from the United States, this is your tax dollars that work for a good thing for a change. Uh, right here specifically, we have the indoor labs. where they have more of the, the sensitive equipment. I'm gonna show you the outdoor labs here in a, just a minute or so. But they're doing what they call bioprospecting here. Uh, they're looking for potentially the next cure to cancer here in the rainforest. Uh, for example, we didn't see one today, but let's say we had seen a sloth. Uh, we'd probably notice a bit of a greenish tint to the fur. And that's because the sloths are so slow that they can't groom themselves. So there's like a little ecosystem growing on their back. Now, what the, the Smithsonian has discovered here is there's about 85 different unique species of uh, fungus and algae that are only found in sloth fur. And they've discovered that about half of those have big time antibiotic properties. There's a good view of it. And they've had a huge success, a whole wide range of diseases, everything from uh, breast cancer to malaria with these uh, antibiotic uh, enzymes that they're finding in these in these sloth fur. Now also the leaf cutter ants. If we were to see leaf cutter ants, uh, you'll see the leaf cutter ants carrying the leaves back to their burrow, but they don't eat the leaves. Then what they do is they feed it to a fungus and then they eat the fungus. Now, in order to protect that fungus from other fungi and bacteria, they excrete an antibiotic enzyme on the fungus. And they've been using the same antibiotic enzyme for the last 12 million years, uh, which that could be a game changer for us. You know, our antibiotics are obsolete after 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, Cynthia, can I have the screen? Now you notice on my screen while John's getting set up, all these big empty grassy areas with streets. This used to be all housing. They had these multi-level, multi-familiar housing here where anywhere from two to 12 families would, I'm sorry, would live per uh, building. And we'll see those up ahead. Now, if you guys are a baseball fan, uh, this corner I'm walking on right now, this is where Rod Carew grew up. His house that he grew up in is long gone, but, but this is uh, where his, he would have grown up on this street. Man. Now here on, on my screen, I have the outdoor labs for the Smithsonian. All of these uh, domes and these enclosures that you see here, these are, uh, they're, they're doing experiments here. Basically, they can control the carbon dioxide, the nitrogen, the oxygen levels in these domes, and uh, they can raise and lower the temperatures. And they're seeing how climate change is affecting different plant species. You know, one thing, if you're a fan of chocolate, for example, you, you, you might want to eat as much as you can right now because it could literally be extinct here in just a few few years. John, up by the bench up there? Uh-huh. No, okay, no, it's just a, a guy in that, so. Um, it was black vulture. Up I thought it was something else. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the, the cacao plant where the chocolate comes from has a very specific temperature range that it can live in. And... Uh, if the temperature is raised too much more, chocolate could become extinct. So we're actually getting funding from uh, candy bar companies like the, the chocolate, like Nestle type, type places, Hershey's. House rents, I think. What do you have? I think the house rents on the bar okay. wire. Obviously, we all have our masks on now because we're in the town and it's, it's the law in Panama says we have to wear masks and we're more than happy to, to oblige. House friend. Cynthia. Oh, yeah. uh, so we already had that. Mm -hmm. He's gone. Mm -hmm. But I think the mate is still here. Mm -hmm. And she's gone too. Okay. House friend. 
All right. Give me the screen back again, Cynthia. See a red crown woodpecker. Oh, nice. <laughs> woodpecker. I think we're going to break our record today. We're at 25 now. And now with the woodpecker, it's 26. Wow. Awesome. Red crown woodpecker. Oh, he's on. You get a shot of him? Maybe? Yeah, we got a shot of him. Is he flying back up here? Yes. Okay. What? That's a house rent. So also the Smithsonian, they also have a an insect farm here. Whoa. John, right here. John. What do you think? Right here, right here, right here. What is it? I got something in. Okay, go for it. Hey, look, John. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got this before. Rudy ground of. over there in the grass. These are the most common doves that you see in Panama. Rudy ground dove, Cynthia. There's Enrique doing tricks for everybody. Does he does it all? John. Yeah. Get, get in the bus. You can do, do do when you can. Get out when you can. Oh. 
All right, so like I said, they have an insect farm here in the Smithsonian. I'm going to show you the amphibian rescue here in a second. Um, and they're, they're saving uh, toads, actually. The difference between a toad and a frog is that a toad breathes through a skin. And uh, there's a fungus called a chytrid fungus that's been passing through the Americas. And for once, this is not a man-made problem. This is uh, something that's, that's just nature taking its course. But a lot of the iconic frog species here in Panama are actually toads. For example, the Panamanian golden frog is actually a toad. And uh, this chytrid fungus dries out the skin and uh, suffocates them. So the, the, the lot of scientists with the Smithsonian, a lot of other organizations, they had to come and get as many of these frogs out of the wild before this fungus came through. So, you know, probably the most iconic frog species in Panama, the Panamanian golden frog, you cannot find in the wild anymore. So they take them, uh, they've taken them to this amphibian rescue, which is up here on the left-hand side. And I know we're, we're running way over time, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. But we'll be wrapping up here in just a few minutes. <clears throat> and this is that amphibian rescue. It's completely shut off right now because of the pandemic. So normally we could go in and, and check out you know, through the window right there, see some of the, the amazing work that's happening. But, uh, you know, obviously it's closed because of the pandemic, as is pretty much everything else in Panama. We'll hop back in the car. We're going to go see some of this housing, and then we're going to call it a day. All right. Moving on. And we'll be doing these uh, uh, these uh, birding tours uh, next week. I think we have a couple of days already set up, Wednesday and Friday. You guys are more than welcome to come back and join us as many days as you like. They're all free. Um, and uh, all you have to do is sign up on our website. Now, here we see this, uh, this, this old iconic uh, canal zone housing all wooden construction. The Americans wanted to build everything out of, out of lumber, which is not that great. And actually we have a little goody up in the road. I don't know if you guys can see him crossing there. Um, which is not that great for in the middle of the jungle. See over here, I went a little bit closer. Yeah. This one here, he's chowing down in the middle right there. All right, and so the, the, these, these houses take a lot of maintenance. Like I said, anywhere from two to 12 families uh, live here. Yeah, uh, Jackie just said there's any way you can uh, uh, give a donation. We'll be sending a, we'll send a link at the end of the tour where you guys can give a donation if you want. <coughs> He's gone. <laughs> but that's totally optional. We're just, we're just happy to be out doing what we do. This is where we belong been cooped up in a for for the last five months so i'm going to show you guys uh before we get to the river like i said we've let you guys go here in just a couple minutes so appreciate you sticking with us um so the uh there's the same dog we saw at the, the baseball field <laughs> he's, he's getting around <laughs> um so all the religion even was provided by, I said everything was provided by the government. Everything was provided by the government, including the religion. And all the major denominations of churches had a church built for them by the government. And uh, so like the Catholic, Lutheran, Baptist, Episcopal, you know, they all had their own churches. But for all the denominations that weren't quite big enough to have their own church, they built what was called the Union Church. And it was a multi-denominational church. Go oh, back, 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 back. There's Chachalacas up there. Uh, Chachalacas out on the grass. Tree, no? yeah. All right, we're gonna we got some more birds. We have a uh, we're gonna actually get out for the scope of this one. We have some gray-headed chachalacas on the grass. Wow. I'm gonna walk up to the church. <clears throat> you are, guys are out of control today. Like huh? seriously. Just pick <laughs> me up. I'm gonna go do the church. Okay. So yeah, so for example, while John's getting the scope set up uh, for the chachalacas, 
th this is the Baptist church right here. I'm going to switch back a little bit. I'm actually, I'm going to wait a second because I want to scare away the Chachalacas that are still on the grass. As soon as I got close, a lot of them flew away. This is a gray-headed Chachalaca. All right, I'm gonna go walk up here. This was the elementary school. It actually still is the elementary school. They still have classes actually back over there. Sorry. This was the original elementary school. Now it's, uh, uh, it's owned by the Smithsonian. I want to keep walking. A lot of noise down here by the canal. Before we head over to the river, we're gonna go see the Chagres River here in just a second. But uh, I wanna show you guys my favorite church sign in Panama. Really the whole world, I think. It's kind of funny. There you go. God loves Taurus. All right, now we're going to head over by the river and then we're going to call it a day. Turn off the All right, river. Hey, you guys, turn left and pick me up over here. Do a loop. Yeah. What's he looking at? I saw a clay colored thrush. Oh, okay. It kind of flew, so if you want to keep going, I'll meet you at the lighthouse. Absolutely, okay. He's gonna meet us over. He's gonna walk that way. Here we have a really nice big uh, LNG tanker coming out of the cut. Uh, this ship here is paying around six hundred thousand U.S. dollars for the transit. Just drop me off up there, Enrique. You can help me. You can help me here. Right? They're dragging the rail right there. You guys are going to see in a second wow, the old Gambrera Bridge was taken out by a ship. Okay. Okay. You got a pale vented dog. Oops, sorry. Pale vented dove. I'm gonna try and get away from the <coughs> all that sound. This this lighthouse that we have up here on the hill, uh, this is this is what they used for navigation pre 1964. Uh, after 1964, they started using those towers like we saw earlier when we were birding. I apologize for all the noise, but they're doing some heavy work on the bridge behind me. We're not gonna. Add now we span over here, 
we see this this massive ship coming out of the Culebra Cut. Coming out of the Culebra Cut. Like I said, that one there paying six hundred thousand U.S. dollars for the transit today. Another ship behind it paying about two hundred and forty thousand dollars. And the, the this is pilot. yeah. And then you have the pilot ship. You can see the the pilot ship coming out. And this is where the probably the, the line handlers are getting off. They're doing a ship change. Um, now we scan over here. We can see the old Gamboa Bridge, which just two months ago was completely destroyed by a ship. A ship missed the curve here and took out the bridge. And so they're having to rebuild that. Luckily for us, a car bridge was built just last year. So we were, Gamboa would be in a really bad shape right now if they wouldn't hadn't gotten that fixed. Uh, John, you have anything? Yeah, I had a pale vented tub. Okay. So it was kind of dark. All right. Well, we're going to wait for you here. We're going to, we don't have, we have a lot of noise over here. Sure. I'm going to turn my mic off. Actually, no, you can see the images that Cynthia just put up. You can see that where that bridge actually hit the, the I'm sure the ship hit the bridge. The bridge came out of nowhere. That's what the pilot said. <laughs> Welcome to the Panama Canal. <coughs> if you go where the ships are coming out of the cut over here, you go about eight miles or 12 kilometers that way, you're going to run into the Pedro Miguel locks. Actually, the Pedro Miguel locks are actually about 15 kilometers, but the, the cut itself is, is 12 kilometers. Got a female great uh, tailed grackle. We're going to look for uh, John to look his way. Did you hear me, Cynthia? You, hello, John. Yes? Yeah, female, female gray tailed grackle. Yeah. You probably have the male on the slide. Uh, <clears throat> Want to talk about the chargers? The gray tail grackle, yep. Yes. Give me a shot, sir. Oh, I'm still pending to show the dove camera. Wait for John. Yeah, I gotta. I'm walking towards you guys. I'll be All there right. in a minute. So this is the famous Chagres River. Uh, this is the river that gives the canal about 40% of its all of its water. This is the river that they dammed up to make the canal. Uh, so, you know, without this river, we wouldn't have a canal as we know it. And that's also why the dredging division is here in Gamboa. All of this, this mud and silt deposited into the canal right here. I'm going to show you a, a nice side view of this bridge. You can see all the damage that was done. <laughs> yeah so here to the right you can see that bridge totally destroyed by the ship and i'm gonna zoom in on it a little bit there you go thank you better i think you get better angle over here You can have an idea where Jering is walking through, which is right here, the ends of the new bridge. And a pipe. Yeah. 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 Is right here too. <laughs> Cynthia, how many birds did we get today? Yeah, yeah we did. That's ones on the grass by the church. Hold on. Uh, we have 30 birds. Nice. Wow, I think that's our highest number so far, if I'm not Yeah. Wrong. Our wow. new record. Wow. I'm going to keep walking while they're getting their stuff figured out. Yeah, that's what they're doing. 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 Yeah, that
Bob's things out. Who knows? Yeah. Well, you missed it the other day. Were you good? No, I was there. For the year. I was there. I was there. Yeah, I was here. Yeah, I was here. So on the other side of this bridge, it's a lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Freedom Bridge right here. From this side of the bridge, uh, we're in the Cologne province, so everything is open, more or less. On the other side of the bridge, uh, Panama province, which is completely locked down. It's like the Bridge of No Return in North Korea. Where are you guys going? We have a nice view of the Chagres. Mm -hmm. What is it? Really hot. Uh, yeah. All right. We're going to end it up here. We're not going to go to the other side to end up. You can show the shot right there. All right, so we're gonna end, we're gonna end the tour here. We're gonna get all the guys out. And we're gonna. Anybody have any questions? This is a, a chance for some questions. The guys, uh, see if there's any questions on the chat popping up. Uh, not yet. No. This is. Thank you so much. This has been a record day. This was stellar. Thank you so much. If you guys know anybody that would, I'm sorry, if you guys know anybody would like to do this, pass the informational, pass, sorry, pass the information along. Like I said, this is free for everybody that wants to experience it. Uh, yeah, right? So, yeah, I'm gonna uh, switch the camera. It's gonna get fuzzy. Mm -hmm. that, that screen's cracked. But hey, Thank you guys so much for coming out today, and, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys again. Bye for Panama. Bye. Thank you.